everyone, and thank you for attending Project Transition, where we're going to introduce you to the new transition guide for our area. This guide was created by FACT, which is the Fredericksburg Area Council on Transition. And the goal of FACT is to support individuals with disabilities as they transition from secondary education into meaningful employment, into community independence and integration, and into independent living at the greatest extent that they can possibly have. So FACT is made up of your local school systems and um, our community services for individuals with disabilities. Throughout this presentation, you're going to meet many of the members of FACT as we show you different things about your guide. My name is Rebecca Leggett and I'm with Stafford County Parent Teacher Resource Center. And as this presentation starts, there's gonna be a link put into the chat and we are going to put the web address and it's factfred.com. So F-A-C-T-F-R-E-D.com. And when you go to that website, you will be able to click across the top bar. It says transition guide. Click on Transition Guide and you will be able to pull up an actual copy of the Transition Guide that you can look at as we go along. We're going to give you a minute here so you can go open a new tab, open that up so as we go through you can look back and forth. If you have another device, you'd like to open it up on that other device, we'll give you a moment to go get that device and get that open. You can always download this guide and print it off. It is quite long. But always remember as you go along, the most up-to-date copy will be available right here on our website. For the history of what is the transition guide, many years ago we realized as a group of fact, and many of us parents of kids with disabilities, that there are so many times we sit in meetings, and especially when our kids start hitting that transition age, and we hear about these are things you need to think about. These are agencies you're going to be talking to. These are things you need to be doing. You get home from those meetings and you think you wrote good notes. You think you remember what you're supposed to do. But two weeks out, a month out, you're like, wait a minute. What agency was I supposed to contact? What was that information they gave me on guardianship or special needs trust or waivers or graduation? All those sorts of things. So we quickly realized that we needed something that we could have as parents and families and, and people working with individuals with disabilities, where it was a one-stop shop, basically, that you could go and you could get all those little pieces of information. So if you forget it along the way, that's okay, because you've got this transition guide to help you find those resources that you need, and it's always going to be at your hand and available for you to help you find what you need. Out of all of that knowledge and what we did, this, this transition guide has um, been developed. And it's a wonderful virtual resource. It's got active links, everything that you need to maneuver through all of the agencies and the supports that you need. So I'm going to turn this over now and to the next people who will start going through the guide. Good evening. My name is Melissa White. I'm the Special Education Transition Coordinator for Caroline County Public Schools. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bethany Ventura. I'm the Transition Specialist for Stafford County Public Schools. So before we get into this guide, um, Melissa and I are going to talk about some important questions that you might want to ask yourself. So Melissa, can you tell us what is transition? Well, Bethany, transition is the process students, their families, and educators use to prepare for the after high school life to identify the desired outcomes and to plan community and school experiences to assure that students acquire the knowledge and skills to achieve their goals. So why should transition be important to me? Well, Bethany, let's talk about a couple questions. First of all, do you want a career and be financially independent after you leave high school? Yes, I would love to have a career as an educator. Do you want to go to college or attend a trade or technical school when you leave high school? Yes, I would love to attend the University of Mary Washington. Fantastic. And would you like to live independently or with friends after leaving high school? I would. My goal is to have my own home. Fantastic. Do you want to participate in community and recreational activities? Yes, I currently volunteer with the Community Services Board, and I would like to continue that. If you answered yes, and to any of these four questions like Bethany has, then transition planning is the next step for you. 
So let's talk a little bit more about what are transition services. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act of 2004 defines secondary transition as a practical guide to life after leaving high school. Transition planning should be focused on academic achievement and functional performance to facilitate participation in post-school activities, such as continuing education, career and technical education, employment, adult services, independent living, and community participation. You will learn more about what this looks like for you and what resources are available in your community as you review this guide. Thank you, Melissa and Bethany. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Courtney Seeley, and I'm the teacher facilitator at the Spotsylvania County Public Schools Parent Resource Center. I'd like to take you through the transition guide and show you how to navigate it. Our guide is located on our website at factfred.com, though we will be happy to provide a hard copy for any participant that requests one while supplies last. Please keep in mind that the transition guide on the website will be the most updated version. This guide is easily accessible on your phone or mobile device and keeps all of these resources at your fingertips, no matter where you are. To make it even easier to access, you may want to bookmark our website on your computer or mobile browser. The first part of the guide that you will want to explore is the table of contents. You will see the topic headings in green that provide general information about each topic, as well as a section titled Resources for Transition, which provides more detailed contact information for agencies and organizations that can provide additional information and assistance. These links will take you directly to the section of the guide that you need to access. And when you are done with a section, you can click on the words at the bottom of each page back to the table of contents to be taken back. You'll see these words at the bottom of each page in the guide. For example, if you click on Age of Majority, you'll be taken directly to page six, where you will find information about your child's transfer of rights when they turn 18, information about supported decision making, as well as a brief description about guardianship and other alternatives. If you want to learn more, click on the links in each section. They will take you directly to the website or document where you will find that information. Supposing you want to learn more about guardianship specifically, you can return to the table of contents and click on guardianship to learn more. You can also click on guardianship under the resources for transition section. And that will take you directly to organizations that can give you more information and assistance with guardianship. All right. Um, click here on Selective Service to learn more about the Selective Service system. This section will explain who is required to register for Selective Services, when they would do that, and provides the link to register online. If you want to know how to get in touch with your public school system to learn more about FACT, Transition Services, or your Special Education Advisory Committee, find the Public Schools link under Resources for Transition. Here you will see the main phone number for each school system's central office location, as well as the location and contact information for their parent resource center if they have one. You will also find information about who to contact regarding the special education advisory committee meetings, their dates, times, and locations. And with that, I'm gonna turn this over to Kim. Hi, I'm Kim Lett, and I'm from the Disability Resource Center in Fredericksburg. Although we're in Fredericksburg, we serve the greater Fredericksburg area, including the counties of Spotsylvania, King George, Stafford, and Caroline, in addition to the city of Fredericksburg. The community resource section of the guide is what I'm going to speak about next. And this is a list of all the community resources in our area. I have to tell you that I wish I had this transition guide many years ago when my son was going through the transition process. This makes it so much simpler and easier to um, know what resources are out there, what the transition process is, and who to contact. Um, the community resource guide lists over 12 pages of resources for you to use during the transition process. It's an information one-stop for you to look for providers and services that you're going to need while and perhaps after you graduate and transition from school to adult life. Consider it the yellow pages to your future. 
Included resources are federal, like Social Security, state, such as the Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services that can help you with employment, and local, such as the Parent Resource Centers and the Disability Resource Center and Goodwill. Please note that during the pandemic, some of these resources may be providing services only through telecommunication, but they are up and running. This section of the transition guide provides resources on the variety of topics you need to consider when going through the process of transition, including independent living skills, housing, employment, transportation, recreation and social opportunities, support groups, and benefits such as the Medicaid waivers and Social Security. All the resources are listed in alphabetical order by the organization or agency's name, and they include their addresses, their email addresses, their websites, and phone numbers. A brief description of what each agency or what each organization does is included. From A to Z, providers are here to help you move into the adult world. And now here's Jessica to speak about the important timelines you need to consider as you move forward in your life. Thank you, Kim. My name is Jessica Weber. I manage the day program at Rappahannock Goodwill Industries. We offer a variety of programs to assist individuals in moving towards a career. I'm here to discuss the important timelines to consider. And I would like to reiterate, as Courtney pointed out earlier, the age of majority section. It is really important that an individual with a disability in the state of Virginia must be determined to be an adult with a disability by the time they turn 19 in order to be eligible for benefits, particularly Medicaid and SSI. If someone does not have a disability determined by the time they are 19 and he or she has a Medicaid waiver, he or she is at risk of losing their Medicaid services and waiver services. In addition, they will not be eligible for SSI. So it is really important to reach out to programs and benefits your child is interested in pursuing early to learn about the process and gather documents to qualify. As a program referral processor at Goodwill, I can tell you the best advice I'd heard from parents is to create a binder or a drawer to store items over the long term. So when you do apply for different programs, you have easy access to your child's paperwork. Things you might want to save are things like their ISP or disability documentation. As your child grows older, it's important to meet application deadlines as highlighted under this area. It is really important that if you are seeking the developmental disability waiver, the wait list is extremely long and it is important to act quickly and as early as possible. The wait list is not based on chronological order, but on need. So it is important to reach out to local community services board to begin this process. You can do it as early as birth. As your child grows older, other important deadlines include things like guardianship, where if you determine your child needs a guardian, it's important to process this four to six months before the child turns 18. As a person who is a referral processor at my organization, it often surprises parents that if they don't have the guardianship paperwork, I need to talk directly to the child and get their permission to do things, not the parent. So if you need that paperwork, don't forget it. In addition, a special needs trust is extremely helpful, but like any investment, early contributions lead to bigger savings. If your child is a male, registration for social service is to be completed 30 days prior to turning the age of 18. And finally, supplemental security income, last but definitely not least, at age 18, a student must apply and their parents' income will no longer be considered. As you navigate this enrollment pathway, please keep in mind that many of these organizations have adopted shorthand names for many resources in this reference. So while you might feel like you're eating alphabet soup sometimes listening to these lectures, it is very important to reference this guide as a quick tip. For example, earlier Kim spoke about work opportunities and organizations, the Department of Aging and Rehabilitation Services is often referred to as DARS.
I'm going to pass it on to Susan. Hi, I'm Susan Gale. I'm the Special Ed Parent Teacher Resource Coordinator for Caroline County Public Schools at the Parent Teacher Resource Center. Let's look at some activities that are going to be hosted by the Fredericksburg Area Council on Transition that are in the works for the upcoming months. Some upcoming virtual sessions in the 2020-21 pool year, we're calling these our Pathways to the Future series. So we're going to start off with January. On January 11th, 2021, a spotlight on agencies. These agencies that'll we, that will be included are the Disability Resource Center, the Rappahannock Area Community Services Board, Rappahannock Goodwill Industries, Department of Aging and Rehabilitation Services. And after each of those sessions, they're going to have a question and answer time so that you will have live staff answering your questions. That's scheduled to be on January 11, 2021 at 1 p.m. or 6 p.m. You have a choice of two times. Then in February, February 6 through March 26, the Parent Education Advocacy Training Center is going to be hosting the Transition Univer University Series. Registration opens on December 1st, and that will be listed on our website for um, factfred.com. Then on February 10th, 2021, we will have a Region 3 Full Life Ahead session. You will see more information posted on that in the upcoming months. In March of 2021, we will have a session on waivers, Medicaid waivers. On April 13th, 2021, there will be a session on guardianship at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. And then either in April or May of 2021, we'll have a session on special needs trust. So how will we find out more about these webinars and workshops? Where will you find them at? We're gonna have flyers with links to the mailing list on our Facebook pages. That would be from the FACT Fred Facebook page, as well as Parent Resource Center websites and their Facebook pages. The Disability Resource Center will be posting things for us on their webpage. The Parent Educational Ad Advocacy Training Center, or PTC, will also be posting things on their webpage. And again, factfred.com is where all of this will be posted in one place. Now we'll turn it over to Marie for any questions and answers for you all. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, right, we're going to head over to the questions and answers. My name is Marie White. I'm the parent coordinator um, here at the Stafford County Public Schools uh, Parent Teacher Resource Centre. One of the first questions that we have um, is you mentioned waivers and I was told to apply for a waiver for my child. Where do I find this information and who do I contact? I can take that. This is Kim. Um, it, with regards to the waivers, it depends on what your disability is and it depends on financial circumstances also. You have to qualify for Medicaid uh, to be eligible for a waiver. And when I say qualify, I mean the individual themselves, even if it's a child, qualifies by their income only, not their families. There are couple different waivers in Virginia and so in order to know where to go to apply for one it would depend on what your status is with regards to your disability. So my recommendation would be to call Tenny Gratz. She's a Virginia trained Medicaid mentor. She works at the Disability Resource Center with me and I would call her and that would be at 540 Three seven three two five five nine. I will ask, also add that the March training that FACT is going to do on Medicaid waivers, uh, Tenny will be doing that and she confirmed the date to me uh, for March the 11th. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kim. Um, okay, next question is, at what age should I uh, apply for a guardianship? And again, who do I need to get in contact with regards to this? I, I believe Jessica said earlier that it's important to plan out four to six months ahead of time. Um, I would contact an attorney at that time. You do need an attorney in the state of Virginia to go to court for you to seek guardianship of your family member. Um, one also wants to think at the time you are thinking of guardianship, is that the route you want to go with and talk to the attorney about it? Perhaps supported decision-making would suffice. 
perhaps a power of attorney would suffice. Perhaps a limited guardianship will suffice. So these are different things that you want to talk to an attorney about so that when your child does turn 18, if you are going for guardianship, you have a court date for when they turn 18 and can go to court and assume that guardianship right after they turn age 18. But it's important to discuss this not only with the lawyer, but also um, the individual in which you are seeking guardianship over. I'd also like to add, as we're talking about under important timelines, um, the guardianship paperwork is one of those really valuable pieces of paper. It's usually one or two pages to keep in your reference drawer because organizations will ask for it over and over again during the transition phase. Excellent. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, next question is, uh, my son wants to get a job after high school. Who can we contact to help with this process? How can I help my high school graduate find social activities after high school? If you are looking for work after high school, you really want to start with the Department of Aging and Rehabilitation Services. It is frequently called DARS. Um, they often have a wait list, so I will highlight that. It's important to get in there early so that your child can be assessed and then they'll help them on a pathway, whether they need a job coach or they need to try some different work areas and then might need to gain some more work readiness skills before they can get that job. Thank you. Uh, next question. Can we tour programs in the community while my child is still in high school? I can also help with this question. Um, I will tell you at Rappahannock Goodwill, we encourage parents and children in high school to give us a call. We'll give tours of our programs and actually we'll accept people in some of our programs as early as 18. We have some students who will work a few days or volunteer a few days while they're still in high school so that they kind of start that transition before they officially graduate. If my child is looking for sponsorship because I think he will need inbuilding work readiness skills, what waiver should we be looking at? I can help with this question as well. Um, I do want to highlight the term sponsorship because that oftentimes confuses people. It might come as a big surprise to you, but when your child graduates high school, most programs are not free. Getting a waiver helps fund or essentially sponsor enrollment in different programs in your community. Otherwise, you might be stuck having to do private pay. So in terms of if your child is looking for sponsorship, for work readiness. Right now, the developmental disability waiver is primarily offering funding for work opportunities. What we have learned this year is that CC plus waivers um, are looking at launching an aspect for employment support, but that is not supposed to be fully operational until 2022. Um, if you have a waiver, and one of the DD waivers that provides employment supports, you must first go through the Department of Rehab Services to seek help through them for employment before you access those services on your waiver. Just because you have them on the waiver does it not mean that you would, you know, automatically start using them. Your case manager is first going to refer you to DARS. Thank you for that, Kim. Can anyone recommend a special needs attorney? Um, we have a list, and I'm not sure the Parent Resource Center is made too. Yes. This is Kim from the DRC. We do maintain a list of attorneys, and we do have them broken up into different categories. When um, you talk about a special needs attorney, that would have to be better defined. You know, are you looking for an attorney to represent you with a special education case? Or are you looking for an attorney to represent you uh, to write a special needs trust or to do guardianship? If you are looking at somebody to do guardianship, you want to use an attorney that is an elder law attorney, if at all possible. They are the ones that know how to write a special needs trust. I will tell you, um, it is quite expensive, as you can imagine, to use an attorney, especially when you are looking at guardianship. So the list that we have also includes the Virginia Law Association where all the lawyers are listed in the state and those that um, 
will they will refer you to pro bono lawyers if there's any availability in the area. Most lawyers will also give you a inexpensive 30-minute consultation when you are looking for those services too. So we would be happy to email you that list if if you need it. Thank you, Susan, for your comment. Highly recommend researching all alternatives before going through guardianship. And she's listed the Virginia Disability Law Center for free services for resources. And please stay tuned on the Fact Fred website for our future Pathways to the Future events. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you everyone who participated and thank you for everyone who shared the helpful information and answered those questions. We hope to hear from more of you in the future that you'll reach out to your school staff, your parent resource center, or some of the wonderful community agencies who've joined us this evening as well. So thank you all.